So on March 27th, 2017, I broke my arm. Um, let's just start out by saying no, it wasn't because of parkour. I was not training at the time, but I was at the gym, but it was a freak accident. I slipped off of a high top. I was not training, again, like a two meter high box, and I slipped backwards. And what happened was that automatically my hand tried to protect me because the first thing that was fallen was my neck. And I ended up reaching out and trying to stop myself from breaking my neck. And what happened was that my whole body crashed into my arm backwards. So uh, literally my two bones just end up being from this to this. So it went into each other, if that makes sense. I fell down put my arm, which I'm so fortunate for, like I know it sounds weird, but my arm protected my neck. I really believe in this quote that says, one loss has protected you from a bigger loss, so everything that happens to you is actually protecting you. After I fell, I fainted for like literally like three seconds of me just understanding what happened, because I heard the crack, but I just thought like it was like, oh, I just fell down. This was. This was on the other side, like my arm was dangling, literally, like I was barely holding on. I went to shock. <laughs> I, I have to say that my whole body uh, did not understand what just happened. I was hyperventilating, I was yelling, it was painful. Both my radius and my ulna broke. And it, it just, it was the most pain I have felt both mentally and physically all at once ever other than it being such a bad fall but it was also uh, the fact that I saw it I saw it being deformed and that just added to my fear and the first thing that came to mind was like this is it you know this is how my my journey ends in, in the sport that I love and other than that my wedding was a month away so I think that accumulation of things that I wanted to achieve in the future kind of slapped down on me when I saw my arm. I was like, so this is it. It's pretty embarrassing. I never wanted to be that fragile in front of people, but you know, I had to I had to process what was happening and in that time it was me crying and then bawling and just yelling to asking people to help me, not knowing what to do. What happened in the hospital was uh, they couldn't fix it because it was so into each other so they told me Emil we have to get you to sleep so that we can put it into a splint and then we have to do surgery the next day but in order for them to put me to sleep that means I have to stay awake for six hours because I've already eaten uh, and you they can't do that unless I'm fasting so for six hours I was just crying so I was in a state of okay Take a deep breath, accept it, you're alive. The, the plates were there for the purpose of allowing it to heal the right way. And I was in a cast uh, directly after. But the first thing that kind of killed me after surgery is just pain. Firstly, pain of breaking your arm. Secondly, pain of surgery, of cutting through millions of layers. Third, the pain of something something that's not supposed to be in your body. Your body knows that this isn't supposed to be here. It felt like it was no longer mine. And that was what made my healing process that much harder because I mentally was not accepting it. Anyways, the first thing that happens when you break your radius and ulna is you lose this. You're not able to do this. So... When I took off the cast, uh, I was literally here. This was the most I could move my arm. And it drove me crazy because like we don't we don't realize how much we use our hands in this way. Wear a scarf, or if you turn the keys, or if you're taking a shower, or if you're brushing your teeth. I couldn't even twist my hand to hold my toothbrush. So it was just, it was stuck. So this is like basically how it moved. I remember this being able to move this fast. This was stuck. So I was like, why is this so rigid? But uh, my baby steps 
that happened was that the first thing that I had to work on is my range of motion. That was the most important part. Understanding your range of motion and pushing your limits every time. And of course, this is also through physiotherapy sessions, uh, if not alone at home for that was just me slowly testing my own limits, putting weight on my arm very slowly, um, understanding when is too much. Um, another thing was also creating little challenges for myself. You know, other than that, it was uh, utilizing your other body parts that do work. Um, I feel like what happens is that if one thing doesn't work, we feel like everything doesn't work, but I still wanted to train. Um, to me, when I broke my arm, the most important thing was that I didn't stop moving. So I didn't care what it was. It could have been squats, it could have been um, sit-ups. And other than that, uh, I just, I still wanted to go to the gym. I still wanted to feel like I was alive. If I stayed at home, I probably wouldn't have worked as hard. So I just did some, you know, exercises using one arm and that was fine. Uh, I was still moving and I, I basically built that relationship with my mind just telling it you know what you can still train it's okay um, and that that helped me tremendously whatever it was I just challenged myself how many squats you can do in a minute or or pistol squats Um, it's weird but subhanAllah once you build that relationship with your body through training you already know your body you know its limits so I feel that's what helped me the most and again it's, it's a really weird process relearning how to use your arm when I broke my arm my my doctor didn't give me an answer no, neither did my physiotherapist they never told me anything I kept asking them when can I go back to training is it ever going to be the same will I ever be able to do the things I could do before and they all gave me answers that were so vague like I don't know every case is different and for me that was killing me I kept asking them just give me approximation like when can I go back to training I felt like if I didn't have an approximation I would never know if I was pushing myself too much or pushing myself too little um, but in a sense that actually worked in my favor because I pushed my own limits based on what I felt and not what I thought was the average so for me, it was like, okay, to me, myself, and I, I have to work on my journey back. Uh, no one's really giving me that much of an answer. I feel like it's time for me 
to take this into my own hands and, and push myself slowly. And every day I pushed myself a little more than the day before. So weird, uh, but your mind plays tricks on you and it makes you feel like you'll never get back to where you were. Only through training was I able to trust my body again. Um, and it was about understanding what your limits were without letting your ego get in the way. I feel like we tend to want to skip steps and I remember I did, uh, I attempted a pull up uh, before I was ready and it hurt like hell. Only when I built that foundation was I confident enough to give yourself time to heal but at the same time it's really your responsibility to figure things out. You know, a lot of people depend too much on their physiotherapist, not that they're bad, they are there to help you or guide you to know what you should do, but a lot of it is on you, on your homework, on your hard work and how much you are willing to work for it. It's super painful. My full mobility isn't here yet. It's been a year, but I could see a little difference between both arms, but uh, you know, I appreciate my body so much more after I broke my arm. Do I want to break my arm again? No. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. I don't want to break my arm ever, okay? But, bismillah, we take our body for granted. Um, I learned to love my body so much more. My arm was like a message from God. Ironically, when I broke my arm, I had two jobs. So I worked a desk job and a parkour coach, but I stopped teaching and I just relied on my desk job because I broke my arm. But that was when I quit my job, which was to some people a stupid thing to do because you have a broken arm, you can't teach anymore. But it just showed me I wanted to teach so much more. It was what showed me that if you don't work on what you want, it can be taken away one day and you can never get it back. So why not work on it now? Why do we always wait till it's too late to end up chasing after our dreams or doing things that we love? The human body is capable of overcoming everything and anything, but it all starts with how you perceive it to be. So if you think you're weak, your body will be weak. But if you think you're strong and if you work continuously on building that relationship and proving to yourself you're strong through training, through whatever it is, I think nothing can stop you.